the next speaker um, is a PhD student. His name is Nicola Fonsi, and his affiliation is the Department of Aerospace Science and Technology at Politecnico di Milan. Nicola, are you there? Can you hear me? If that's the case, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so, good uh, morning or afternoon. Uh, my name is Nicola. I'm here actually with Vittorio Cavalieri. And together with Alessandro De Gasperi and Sergio Ricci, we developed this uh, fluid structure framework in Python that couples Nastran model analysis uh, with SU2. Uh, so the oops, sorry. So the um, um, the talk of today will first briefly introduce the motivation for this work, um, mostly because I want to uh, make clear what what's the target of the work itself. Uh, then we'll have uh, we will fly over the framework and implementation. Unfortunately, there's not much time for the details, so I will give you my contact on the end, so you can send me an email if you have questions. And then, of course, there will be time for some uh, examples, some results uh, of the of the framework in action. Uh, so the motivation. Whenever we uh, talk with industry or other research groups. We, um, in the elastic field, we most often use Nastran uh, because this is the, the standard to transfer models or information. Nastran has uh, a aerodynamic code inside, integrated, which is a very standard panel code, uh, the DLM. And more and more often, we are asked to design a component or system uh, that uh, is put in a certain operational condition, which goes over the limits for DLM. So, for example, this is um, a concept lane from Airbus. Uh, I want to say that I did not participate in this project, so all the credit goes to Airbus. This is just an example of a new design. And you can see, due to the deep transonic regime or due to the, let's say, peculiar configuration, uh, you most often cannot really rely on DLM, not even in the preliminary phase. So what we want to do is to create a bridge between what's the standard approach and the an alternative approach uh, in an easy way. So what I mean is that usually when you, let's say, start with a new design or with a new elastic model, uh, you will have some preliminary sizing based on very rough geometric estimates. And you immediately produce a very simple finite element model, which is usually a stick model, so made of beams, or maximum plate model, so really, really simple. And then you couple this model with DLM and obtain all the aerolastic simulations you need. Even at later stages of the design, when you have much more details, you still use a very simplified model for aerolastic cases. And this is due to the due to the fact that many tools, for example, allow the production of these uh, stick models in an automatic fashion. So what we want to do is to let's say only change one brick, so only change from DLM to CFD. In this way, we will not disrupt the workflow, the common workflow, especially for in an industrial application, this is important. And uh, still, we want to minimize also the added work uh, for this change. So what we would like to do is really to provide a new, um, new method to perform uh, elastic studies with CFD in, even at the preliminary phase without changing that much what you would do normally. And the framework to do so is uh, the following. So everything is driven by this uh, fluid structure interface uh, script, which is written in Python. I have to say that the first version was written by David Thomas from University of Liege. Uh, unfortunately, as of version 7 was not really um, working anymore, was not updated. So we took the chance to update it. So for example, it's now using the new uh, mesh solver. Uh, it's also using as a fluid driver, the new uh, C single zone driver. And of course, the completely new part is the structural solver, which is this Python module, um, which integrates the modal equations of motions and obtain as an input, of course, the finite element model. Um, so few more words about this model, so, so the this solver. Uh, again, what we want to do is really to minimize the added work. So the idea is, that when you have a new design, when you have a new FEM model, you will most likely, first of all, uh, obtain a modal uh, analysis because this is really the, the first step. And uh, with the outputs of this modal analysis, 
you can directly use them as an input to the to SU2. Uh, you can also provide other parameters in the configuration file, like for example, a critical dumping which is also quite standard to be introduced in uh, Flutter analysis, for example. And of course, it will also read the finite element model mesh because it needs to know uh, the positions of, of, the, of the nodes for the interpolation. And it also needs some uh, interpola interpolation nodes only. So some, it's usually, they are usually called slave nodes. Uh, so basically nodes that are only used to represent, for example, the rotation of a beam. But this is something, again, that it's uh, not uh, adding any complicacy because you would need those nodes uh, anyway for DLM. So for example, this is a NACA 0012 profile. In the dashed black line, you have the aerodynamic boundaries. And the green nodes are, well, here um, there are many. You don't need so many. But these are just slave nodes that are required to interpolate between the structure, which is here made of only two points, basically, the yellow and the red one. So the inch line and the center of mass, and the aerodynamic mesh, which is not represented, but it's all around the dashed black line uh, profile. Um, now, once you have the framework prepared, you can perform four different kinds of simulations, depending on the uh, parameters. Uh, so on the top, you have a, a, a set of steady simulations. Uh, so top right, you see a test case we performed was, um, it was an ACA 012 pitching and plunging, and we were comparing the results with theory just to verify the implementation. Top left is something a bit more interesting, I have to say. So this was, um, uh, we were asked to uh, basically draw and uh, optimize this uh, morphing profile. And part of this was also to, uh, of course, draw the performance map. So what we did was to receive the finite element model, uh, define a actuation mode, which is a fictitious mode just to define the maximum deformation of the profile. We prepared only one mesh in the undeformed configuration. And then we were basically imposing the actuation of this mode. So in a certain way, imposing the deformation of the profile. And in this way, we could automatically and very efficiently uh, produce the performance map for this morphine profile. Uh, of course, there are there are other ways to do the same, but in this way it was really uh, straightforward to this way was really straightforward to implement. Uh, on the bottom, something a bit uh, more uh, challenging, maybe. So these are uh, unsteady simulations. On the left, you have a common test case again, which is the benchmark supercritical wing. A bit more details here. Uh, so this is again a common test case because there are uh, experimental results. So you can compare with something real. And uh, we, we did the comparison. And again, the code was working as expected. So it confirmed also the implementation of the unsteady version of the, of the framework. So this is the transfer function between the pitch rotation and the coefficient of pressure at the 60% of the span. Um, and maybe the most interesting uh, test case is uh, at the bottom right. So this is a. Uh, the, the full case, let's say. So it's a time marching solution, so fully unsteady. And we also integrate the equations of motions instead of imposing a certain amplitude of the mode. So this is the study of flutter, if you want to call it like that. Uh, but not only can be also the study to any kind of um, new condition, new aerodynamic condition. Um, and in particular, this was uh, this is a European project called Gadget. Uh, which is aimed at studying uh, active gas load alleviation techniques. This is the wind tunnel model. And we were, we were asked to, to draw the flutter boundaries for this uh, model. And you can see here um, that we were given the, uh, the finite element model on the left. There was only the wing, actually, uh, because the fuselage is completely rigid. So we add to add uh, some some nodes for the interpolation. Um, but for the rest, it was really straightforward. We could just uh, run a model analysis with that FEM and uh, uh, put these as inputs to the framework. Of course, after preparing the also the aerodynamic mesh, and we could directly run the, the aeroelastic simulation in time domain. And this is just one of the many results we obtained. So this is at the edge of Flutter because you can see 
the surface mode, which is the orange line, it's almost not damped at all. So this is really at the edge of flutter. And uh, indeed, this was part of the flutter boundary. Um, now, um, in this work, we didn't want to, uh, of course, introduce any new mathematical model. What we wanted to do is really to apply um, established models, methods to solve a problem, which is bridging between uh, common best practices, especially in industry, but also in uh, other research fields, and a higher fidelity or elastic simulation. And the goal was to do it with minimum added work, human work, and of course, also without disrupting completely the workflow, the usual workflow. Now, of course, this adds uh, a lot of computational costs with respect to DLM. So in the future, uh, one of our goal was, is definitely to introduce some automatic identification of the aerodynamic system. So basically the creation of a reduced order model, we are now working on that. And the idea is that you would be able to run uh, the full CFD simulation only once at the beginning of the of the, the design, let's say, and then if you don't change if you don't change the aerodynamic conditions, but only the structural uh, parameters, for example, you can just reuse uh, the um, identified aerodynamics uh, for further simulations. And also, uh, everything is in modal coordinates, so everything is linear from the structural point of view. And this is something uh, that we are also working on. So the idea is really to push on the geometrically nonlinear uh, structures uh, to solve this problem, this limitation. Uh, now, I know this was really fast uh, because of uh, the limitation in time, but if you have any question, just send us an email. This is my contact. There is also a tutorial already published in the website. So if you want to try to help, your, help yourself, this is a good place to start. I also have to say that um, this work was partially founded by the European project uh, gadget I was talking before. And yeah, I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you enjoy the presentation. Thank you very much, uh, Nicola. Very interesting, also very interesting that SU2 gets coupled with such an important code as Nastran. Uh, we have a question from Professor Alonso. Uh, is the framework you have developed specific to Nastran or can it be reused with other finite element analysis structural solvers? How much work would be involved? Okay, so actually, um, well, we, we talk about Nastran because it's the standard, but uh, we have an in-house code, which is called Neocast. I'm not sure if you, if you know it, uh, which is a finite element code and uh, it uses the same output format of Nastran. And in that case, it's completely com compatible. So as soon as you can write a punch file to represent uh, uh, the modal uh, analysis outputs, and uh, you also can, uh, um, let's say, show the finite element mesh uh, with the same uh, format as Nastran. So let's say the grid cards uh, for the nodes, basically. Um, it's really easy to to use any other finite element code, so extremely straightforward actually to extend it. All right, um, I do not see uh, other questions. Yes, uh, a comment uh, by Pedro. Excellent example of creating features. Uh, opening push requests and documenting and kudos to you um thank you very much nicola keep, keep up with thank you thank you also pedro <laughs>